If you're watching this video, chances are you are in the two-thirds of the American population that is overweight. So with all this fad diets out there and everybody's, you know, wanting to lose weight, um, there's diet pills and there's new diets and there's old diets and there's this and there's that. Well, there's a lot of confusing information out there. So today I'm going to talk about some simple tips on how to lose weight the healthy way. Number one eat as much organic food as possible. You're going to avoid all the chemicals, all the food additives, artificial ingredients that mess with your endocrine system and mess up your metabolism. And if you'd like more information about why organics are important, I do have an organic video, so feel free to watch that. So that's number one. Number two, eat breakfast. And I'm not just talking about eat any old breakfast. It needs to be a well-balanced meal. So you need to have healthy fats, good amount of protein, limit the refined sugars, and have good carbs like fruits and vegetables. So one example would be um, do a breakfast smoothie. You can throw in some frozen fruit, protein powder, and some flaxseed oil. So that's all three categories. Now those donuts won't work. Anything that's high sugar won't work because it spikes your blood sugar. So you feel pretty energetic for a few hours, but then you dip real low, and so you feel lethargic and you're not as efficient at work as you need to be. Number three, eat high fiber foods. These are gonna keep you full longer and they're gonna fill you up faster. Some examples would be uh, Jerusalem artichokes, broccoli, pears, blueberries, beans and lentils, uh, sprouted grain breads, unrefined grains, Again, these foods are going to keep you full longer so you have less cravings and you eat less throughout the day. Number four, drink water. You want to drink half your body weight in ounces, and this is going to help increase your metabolism, help your body detoxify, and it's going to help improve your digestive function. So some tips on how to drink water throughout the day is right when you wake up, drink eight ounces of water. It's actually just a cup, so it's not that much, and I find that this gives me a burst of energy. And then drink eight ounces of water right before you eat, room temperature or warm, and that will help your digestive system get working. Number five, pay attention to what portion sizes you're eating. It's amazing to me on packaged foods and bottled foods and drinks and beverages. You know, there's on the, on the nutrition fact label to say how many servings are for that item. And a lot of times it's two or more servings, so pay attention because it's real easy to drink that bottle of whatever you're drinking and you're getting way more calories than the label says. Um, and then a lot of people don't know the standard serving sizes for food. A serving of meat is three to four ounces, which is the size of a deck of cards. A tablespoon of oil, which is about the size of a ping pong ball. Uh, one ounce of nuts is about this, also the size of a ping pong ball. Uh, one cup of raw vegetables is a serving, and then half a cup of carbohydrates is a serving. So it's real easy to overeat if we're not paying attention to how much we're eating. Number six, we need to eat between five and six meals a day. The problem is when we get on a roll of eating one to two meals because we're going like crazy and our schedules are packed and we don't have time to eat, we're actually doing a big injustice to our bodies because our bodies obviously need food to function. So when we are starving and we finally sit down to eat or we finally get something on the run, we spike our, our glucose so we get a rush of energy and then it plummets and then it, we just develop this cycle where we're craving foods and then because we're so hungry we go get the wrong foods. So if we plan accordingly and we eat breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, and then dinner, it's actually going to help normalize our metabolism and it's going to keep us from having uh, spikes of sugar and spikes of glucose and then craving stuff all the time. Number seven, don't eat after 8 p.m. Now you can kind of pick your own you know, hour that you're not going to eat, but the point is don't eat late. First of all, we don't need all a ton of calories when our bodies are trying to wind down for rest. They're going to be stored and they're not going to be used, which is going to contribute to weight gain. But also, eating late puts a lot of stress on our digestive systems, and then also it interrupts our sleep patterns too, so we'll wake up feeling like we didn't really even sleep. Number eight, limit your sweets to one to two times a week. 
Now, I know this can be really difficult because sugar, let's face it, it's an addictive, you know, thing to eat. So when you're not eating it and you're used to eating it, your body craves it. But this is the one of the best things you can do for your health. Now, one way to do this to limit the amount of sugar that you eat throughout the week is when you do want to treat yourself, go out. Don't buy it and keep it at your house because then it's going to call your name in the middle of the night and you're going to you know, want to go find that ice cream or that cookie. So go out to get something sweet. And then if you do buy something sweet for the house, get the small container. So if you're going to buy ice cream, buy the pint instead of the gallon because then it's you know a couple of servings and that's it. You're not tempted throughout the whole week to eat the whole gallon of ice cream by yourself. Number nine avoid soft drinks. I've said this time and time again, but not only do soft drinks have a ton of sugar, 16 teaspoons of sugar in one can of Coke, but also it has high fructose corn syrup, which is going to reduce your body's ability to feel full because it impacts uh, two hormones that do help you feel full, leptin and insulin. Now, even the diet drinks, okay, those are a no-no as well because they have artificial ingredients and chemicals that are endocrine disruptors. They get in your body and they basically wreak havoc on your metabolism. So even though the nutrition fact label may say zero calories and you think it's a freebie, it's really not. Number nine, keep unhealthy and junk foods as far away as possible. Don't keep them in your house, don't keep them in your pantry, don't keep them in your car, you know, and don't tempt yourself by driving by the fast food places every single day if there's an alternate route you can take or whatever else you're tempted with. You know, if you just crave those Shipley donuts in the morning, don't drive by it every day. Take an alternate route because, you know, temptations can eventually get to you if you're not strong-willed enough and then we can get in the habit of if we make one mistake then we're like, oh, the whole day shot, we might as well eat the, you know, all the food we can find and we might as well eat 10 Chipley's donuts instead of one. So don't make that mistake. If you do mess up, get right back on track, get right back on the wagon, keep eating healthy, um, but it's much easier if you just avoid it in the first place. Number 11, keep emergency foods with you, whether it's in your purse or in your car. These are foods that you want to have on hand when you're hungry so you don't make bad decisions. So in my car, you'll always find turkey jerky and buffalo jerky. And of course, these are, you know, these foods are going to be organic. They're not going to have nitrates or nitrates in them. Um, I also keep fresh and dried fruits. And one of my favorite brands of dried fruits, it's called Just, and then it lists the name of the fruit. So if you want to get dried strawberries, it'll be called Just Strawberries, and it's just what the name says. It's Just Dried Strawberries, nothing added. Um, and it's a convenient way to get um, nutrients, and they're convenient. And also keep nuts and seeds, good healthy snack, good oils, a little bit of protein. Uh, always keep water in my car. And then also I keep some kind of um, healthy grain or healthy carb, like flaxseed crackers or um, some type of, you know, quick energy organic item. So keep those things on you and then you'll be less tempted to make bad decisions. Now all these tips on how to lose and maintain weight the healthy way, basically they boil down to taking personal responsibility for your health. I think in our society it's real easy to blame genetics or how we were raised or you know what someone taught us and and use that as an excuse for our behavior or the choices that we make in life but it really does boil down to we have the authority to make a difference in our own lives we can choose better we can eat better we can live better we can change jobs if we want to. We can move. We can, you know, I mean, the possibilities are endless. And if we don't take personal responsibility for our own lives, basically our lives are going to pass us by. So I made this video today to hopefully um, incite some motivation and to cause you to realize that you can make a difference in your health. I think a lot of people... Um, choose the wrong priority for their life, whether it's convenience or, um, you know, they want to have this high status job even though it takes away all the time that you would have with your family or being able to eat healthy. So we just, we kind of need to take an account of what's really important in life 
because we can have it all, but if we don't have our health, we really have nothing. Thank you to my subscribers. Thank you to all the people that um, leave comments and view videos, and I will see you next time. Bye.